mixing it up. I'd like to call the March 9th, 2023 Board of Adjustment meeting to order. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Present. 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 Robin Kane. Present. Sam Miller. Present. Right. Would you like to call our alternate members' name as well? Present. Yay. Okay. A quorum has been met with five regular members present and one alternate member present. We'll move on to the agenda. Are there any changes to the agenda? Seeing no changes, I'll ask for a motion. Make a motion to approve. And I'll second it. Motion to approve and a second. Is there any discussion? None here. Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Approval of the minutes. Are there any changes to the minutes from our last meeting? From January 12th. 2023. I believe the clerk mentioned before our meeting began that there were a couple of small errors that those will be repaired. Uh, can I have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. A second? A second. Any discussion? We have a motion to approve and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries unanimously. In accordance with the State Government Ethics Act, it is the duty of every board member to avoid conflicts of interest. Does any board member have any known conflict of interest with respect to any matters coming to the board tonight? If so, please identify the conflict and refrain from any participation in a particular matter involved. Hearing none, we'll move on. Is there any old business? Hearing none, we'll move on to new business. New business is BOA 20-03 and BOA 21-02, 85 degrees and sunny LLC. Reviewing an action of the order in the matter of 85 degrees and sunny LLC from hearing date from March 10th, 2022. All right. Um, so I asked for this to be uh, brought on the agenda for tonight's meeting. Um, if you recall, last year we did a very uh, lengthy <laughs> hearing um, in this matter, the 85 and Sunny LLC um, appeal from two um, NOVs. And um, you saw your agenda, and I tried to put it together um, in chronolo chronological order where we were. Um, now, generally, the board um, has historically delegated the order preparation to solely to me, and I've done them all in, for the last several years at this point. Um, the draft order is based on um, the agenda packets, the exhibits that are submitted, um, the, the board's deliberation, um, I'm usually over here scribbling as hard as I can and taking copious notes of everything you say. Um, I have the benefit of the minutes that Cherie prepares and we also have the recordings. So um, by the time we have an order that is drafted and prepared and then reviewed by the chair for signature, it's been through a pretty thorough preparation process. I circulate the order to the attorneys um, if there are attorneys involved. Um, for their review and comment, which is a um, typical um, procedure for the entry of orders. Um, and I would say more often than not, we're able to come to a consensus about a, an order version, or there are things that we disagree on that are not maybe substantial or just so far apart from what I um, have put together from the, for the board versus what is being represented as what actually happened. Um, this is one of those um, orders that there's just a large gap between 
the drafted proposed version and comments we've received from uh, council. And because of that, I wanted to bring it back to the board for your review. I mean, this is your order. You are sitting as the judge and um, it is your order to enter. And so given the um, large differences between my version and council's version, I felt it was important to improve it and bring it back to the board. Um, and so that's why you have this agenda packet um, the way it is set up. And so um, for tonight's purposes, what I am seeking from the board is if you had an opportunity to review this packet today, I know it came out today, we were trying to get it together and make sure everyone's comments were included. Um, but um, what I'm looking for is the board to advise me what, if any, changes to make to the proposed, my proposed draft, okay? Um, and you, even if there's changes you wanted to see that were not proposed changes by council, bring those up too, okay? okay. Um, but for this purpose, I think it would be helpful if you want a change made, then you should make a motion for that specific change, and then at the end we'll adopt one final draft, if you will. Does that make sense? <laughs> um, so I propose we kind of work our way through and then just kind of address one thing at a time, probably be the most efficient way. And if you have questions, um, we have the record here um, that we have to this point. Um, I have the entire county packet. I have the applicants packet, their entire binder. Um, they also, the applicant, or I guess the appellant, had the um, whole hearing transcribed. So like every single word, <laughs> if you have a specific question. Um, I know it's been some time, but I know you guys take really good notes. You have the benefit of the minutes and your own recollection. Um, so if you had anything, we do have that available if you desire to see that. Um, so I'm just going to kind of work my way through, and if you have questions, stop me, and I think that's the best way to go. Is that okay with everyone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd okay. be fine. Yep. Um, so the first <coughs> item in the, uh, in the agenda packet is number one, which is my email to staff saying, here is the proposed order. Um, please respond with comments, and I've already told you that's my general practice. I draft an order. I send it out for comments. Um, behind tab number two, is the initial draft order. So this is the tab number two. Oh, you don't have tabs. Sorry. Page 18. My agenda's, my packet's not. Let me look at this. This is just the first one. Okay. So the second item, sorry. My paralegal, bless her heart, I was in court all day. She gave me tabs <laughs> 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 to, help me, um, to help me make my way through tonight. But um, so your page 18 in your agenda packet. Okay. All right, your page 18 is page one of the first draft of the order. So this is the order that I sent out and said to um, the to 85 and Sunny's Council, Mr. Weber, and to the county, um, uh, Mr. Uh, I, uh, Mr. McCree was the one who was the attorney for that proceeding, so mm -hmm. I sent it to him and Miss Morgan. Um, is this the one that was sent sent to me for signature? No, I'm getting to that. One. Okay. Gotcha. okay. <laughs> um, so. That is number, so page 18 through 25 is my first draft, okay, of the order. And if you go to page 26, well, these are where the changes. Of the agenda, I'm sorry? No, no, bye. Yes, page 26. That is the first page noting um, the proposed changes from Mr. Weber, okay? And he's gone through and he's added information and he's, um, you just kind of flip through that. And I'll come back to that. I'm just trying to walk you through the packet right now so you know what you're looking at, okay? So page eight, uh, excuse me, 26 through... 34. 34 is the uh, Mr. Weber's first markup. Okay? Page 35 of your agenda through 43 
three are the county's, is the county's response, okay? So once I receive both attorney's comments, I take both comments to my version and I go item by item to see where they agree, where they disagree, and where I agree. <laughs> um, and so when you go to page 44 of your agenda packet, that is my response to the attorneys based on both versions, okay? okay. Now, I did not go through and make every single grammatical, I didn't note every single grammatical change I made, okay? Because that would have taken, you know, mm -hmm. hours to rewrite an email noting every single change. Um, what I did do is I noted the four items that I thought were the substantial changes that I did not make, okay? Any other changes I made at, after this point that I didn't note were commas, periods, uh, term, but nothing substantive in my opinion, okay? okay. Um, and so I noted items one through four that were things I did not, changes I did not make. Um, and these were changes that I did not make based on Mr. Weber's proposal. The county had some changes, but they are mostly um, stylistic, grammatical. Um, this was actually the, um, things like this was actually the pin number or something like that. They were not um, substantial changes, if you will, okay? Okay. All right, and I will note that Following receipt of the county's proposed changes, I did not receive any comment from Mr. Weber disagreeing with the county's changes. Okay, so um, at that point, I was really looking at, I looked at the county's changes, I looked at Mr. Weber's changes, and Mr. Weber wanted substantive changes. Okay, so that's why I commented those four um, that I did not change. So if you look at page 46, through 54. That is the current draft based on my review of both attorneys' proposed changes. Okay? okay? This is the draft that we're operating off of, and I would suggest you operate off of tonight that we're gonna that we should work through. Um, because it's the most updated version, I guess, is is, is what I'm saying. Um, now, looking at my email on page 44, you note I said this is going to be sent to the chair for his signature and be submitted. Well, in between me having this sent to the chair, I received um, Mr. Weber's response, which starts with your agenda packet, 58. Okay. 58 through 60. And when I received that, I that's when I decided this was a, this was going to be a, a this needed to be a consideration by the board to de, to make these determinations specifically because we were apart um, and, and not close. So I felt it was prudent to have you review those items. Um, so we um, held on to the, the draft for your consideration and, and resolution on that tonight. Um, so, so are we going to just, or is, it, um, is it prudent for us to just focus on these main areas of disagreement? Unless you, yes, I, I would say these are the primary areas of contention. There are a number of mm -hmm. things in his email that I do want to address that things like I didn't include, or, <clears throat> but these four areas of contention are the, the largest areas. Um, of course, if you have any other changes, yeah. please let me know. Um, well, I can, I can tell you, areas. I can tell you for a fact that there was never any request that came to this board requesting a Zoom meeting. So that's not something that this board decided to deny. So you will note in your packet that yeah. I included, and it's going to be page 48 through 49. Okay. 
you look at page 55 through 57 um, of your packet, this is the correspondence from March of 2022. Um, and this is um, Mr. Weber reaching out to me, um, asking if I was still representing the Board of Adjustment, how he can send a, um, a PowerPoint presentation, and with it, it, will, the, will the board allow any testimony by Zoom with COVID issues still out there? Thank you. Um, and I responded um, on page 57 and said, you can send your PowerPoint to um, Cherie and the board will hear um, in-person te in testimony only. We, there were no provisions by, in the board or any boards in Currituck County that were permitting remote meetings or anything of that nature. Um, I interpreted that as a procedural question. Uh, what are we gonna where do I send the PowerPoint um, do you have capabilities to do this or to do that no the board's hearing in-person testimony um, he never filed a request he never asked for uh, a board ruling um, I, I interpreted it as a procedural preliminary informational gathering email honestly mm -hmm. um, okay. the county included their um, uh, comments, uh, our comments here about um, testimony, about when I reached out, or what's your position as to that? Is there going to be any, does, is the board doing any remote testimony? Is the county doing any more? And um, that is the, the um, county's response on uh, March 4th. That's on page 61. Um, so is he, is he calling that, he says, uh, March 1st, 2022, we made a formal inquiry in writing as to whether Zoom testimony would be allowed. Is that, is that's that the email? email. That's, that's the email? That's, that's okay. what he's alleging is his email. Yeah, that's not, formal request. that's not a formal request. Um, my, you saw my response, which was, I don't agree that was a formal request. In addition, he didn't m either file a motion or make a request at the beginning of the proceedings to the board. I don't remember him saying, asking anything about that. Um, he also did not object to not being permitted to bring a witness via WebEx or Zoom or anything like that. Um, and I recall there being numerous witnesses. So, at, and nowhere in the record, not just, I don't recall, but nowhere in the record is there a motion for remote testimony, a request for remote testimony, or an objection to remote testimony. But you see his comments, um, you saw the county comments, which are um, on page 61 uh, of your packet from the county response um, about the Zoom request and he said the county, um, Mr. McCree said the county would not agree and cited Chief Justice Newby's 224 proclamation of court to resume their regular operation, ending mass mandates and advisories as additional reason, reasonings. Um, and also there, he also alleged that during the hearing the did not make a motion for a make testimony or raise it or an objection at all either. So you have both attorneys' um, positions my version of the order does not include a reference to that um so it is at this point in your discretion if someone wants to add that then i would suggest you make a motion to add that to this order and we can have a vote on it if there's no motion we'll move on to the next thing. and you can discuss it i, I would uh yeah, I, I, I would saying. like to make a motion that we do not include it because that request, I mean, it implies the way he is writing <clears throat> it. It implies that he made a formal request to this board and this board denied that request and that never happened. That did not happen. Yeah. Okay. Even, you know, even though that's not how this all, it, I, I would agree that this all, it was an informal inquiry, you know, sort of right. asking if the county's doing that. 
and the answer was no the county's not doing that and then and it didn't come from the board itself and it didn't come from the board itself as well and I, I mean right. I did say in my email the board will hear in-person testimony only mm -hmm. um, because that's what the board was doing at the time and so right. but there was no motion no objection um, and the emails are right there for you to see so all right. all right we have a motion do we have a second I'll second that mm-hmm is there any discussion other than what's already been talked about? No, I think it's pretty, pretty. I mean, you, you basically have a seasoned attorney who understands the rules of order and those types of things as well. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, this is a, a record conversation. So with that, you know, that attorney made that request informally, should know how to do those types of things, didn't bring any of it to us, didn't appeal any of those questions to all those points. Yeah, I, right. I agree with you. Hundred percent. Yeah. So. All right. Any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, say nay. The motion carries unanimously. Um, and then the second item that was raised was um, the list of witnesses. So one of the proposed changes on the first round was that uh, for Mr. Weber was that I include a list that. At the beginning of the order, there be a list of people who testified, um, and I did not see that as a. I didn't have any. That's true. Sure. Uh, is that record. is that normal? It, you know, it's stylistic, right? So, like, I included some of the county stylistic changes. I'm fine to give that accommodation to the um, other attorney. You know, he want he likes to see a list of witnesses. We know who testified because we were all here and the record says who testified, right? Mm -hmm. so table of contents for right. us. Right. And so I put in a list of witnesses, but one of the proposed um, changes was that um, there was a list of witnesses who testified and then a whole list of people who testified by affidavit. And I was like, I don't recall affidavits. Um, how do you how do you swear in an, an affidavit? Uh, well, and you see Mr. Weber's response. So, what I I didn't include the uh, the af the witnesses who testified, quote unquote, by affidavit. Um, one upon review of the record, I don't see where the board accepted an affidavit in place of a person. You saw the county's response. I don't remember is, any affidavits. They, they may have been part of the. He, of did the he book. enter them into as part of the record? He, he entered part. He entered his binder in as part of the record, and he alleges there were affidavits in the record. Yeah, I know. It's going to get even thicker with this. <laughs> yeah. My based on my review, and and I'm certainly writing this order as for you, right? Mm -hmm. um, is that the board did not in your deliberation comment at all about affidavits and so yeah. the affidavits are were introduced as part of his binder exhibit then they're part of the record um, but listing them at the beginning as testifying by affidavit asserts that this board considered those affidavits as testimony and that was not the um, it was not what it could, that during the presentation that we received you know you can put something in there that states something totally contrary by some expert with some affidavit never bring it up in the phone book that we have here and that somehow that we considered that then because it was uh, in the book that's no, that's it, an that's, exhibit that's an exhibit that's not testimony yeah, as right. far as I'm, i mean I, I mean is that something that um is typically permissible an affidavit as testimony without any ability to swear in or so it depends i mean an affidavit is a, a statement under oath um however affidavits can't be cross-examined right and in a quasi-judicial proceeding you know certainly um experts can base their uh, opinion based on a review of a set of documents and their opinion is rendered based on that set of documents um, that's a that's a far cry from saying that the people who provided the set of documents testified. Um, mm -hmm. So I did not. All oh. I, I what I provided in the order was 
Wait, so in the, I provided a list of witnesses, and if you look at, on page one of my, the last version of the order, this begins on page 46. And that second, the first small paragraph, that second paragraph on the first page, it says the following witnesses testifying. And I listed who was physically present at the hearing to testify. Now, I did not say, I didn't allege, and so and so and so and so and so and so didn't qualify because they're <clears throat> an affidavit. I simply said, these are the people who testified. Like, in terms of your order, these are the people who testified. Certainly, is this part of the record? Yes. Can they use this on their appeal if they want to, to say one thing or another about an affidavit? Yes, that's not, that's an argument for a different day. But for this board and what this board considered, I listed the witnesses who were present. That's right. And so... Um, you now I will say this I didn't include a list of witnesses to begin with <laughs> I just rolled right into the into the hearing and um, so we can completely remove the paragraph about witnesses or you can leave it as is right now with um, the witnesses who are present this was a request that Mr. Weber made to begin with I made part of the change just not all of it so that's the next item. Did, did he did he give a reason for wanting that in the order? I mean, it's already part of the record. The the people oh, who testified, right. yeah. No, so um, the first markup order, um, the one that tracks changes at the beginning of your mm -hmm. packet, it was one of the side changes he made, and he said he didn't say anything. He just added it in, um, and it just says on March four. First, he has his, um, uh, he, had, he has, the first portion of that is on March 1st, the attorneys for appellant requested to have witnesses testify remotely due to COVID-19 pandemic. Um, the board denied this request on March 9th. Then he goes into the following witnesses testified and um, listed all the people who testified at the hearing. And then it says, and... And he lists a number of individuals testified by affidavit on behalf of the appellant. I took out that end piece because so, yeah, I, I would, I would, I would actually prefer that we take it all out because that's not something that we typically put in the orders. That's not a normal part of our orders. And you know, if we leave, if if we leave the partial list in, I think that might open us up maybe to an appeal for this yeah. right um in terms of not listing all of the uh not being specific enough right it when in fact all of the uh the the people who provided testimony whether in, in person or by affidavit are in the are named in the record right so i don't think it needs to be in the actual order at all What's your legal opinion on it being there? Uh, this is procedural. I mean, the record will speak for itself. The order is your um, is the written um, it's the written decision to, to document yeah. your decision. So, um, your generally your orders do not have a list of witnesses. Yeah, I've I've never seen a list of witnesses in any of the orders. It that feels yeah, then I, I, if it's not normally done, then so I wouldn't do it. There's something inappropriate about it, but your orders generally do not have a list of witnesses. The mm -hmm. record usually speaks right. for itself about witnesses. It is no, in your I, discretion. If you want to remove it, then just. And it's not uh, it's not an advantage or a disadvantage for us to not have it. That's right. Yeah, and it, to but me, it's a point of contention. <laughs> yeah. To me, it's you're giving me an inch with the list of witnesses and now I'm trying to take a mile and open it up to everything I got here so that if I did appeal it I could call anybody in there because I already called them as a witness and you already agreed to that and that's just kind of where it's at so it's and all, all those people are on the record anyhow so you could just get it off the record and do that and your and your decision here tonight about the written order is about what you decided that night it's not a yeah. concern about yeah. an appeal or anything mm -hmm. like that your decision right. was based on what was presented to you that night and um 
putting a list of witnesses is neither here nor there. If you prefer it not to be in there, it's a point of contention, which is why I raised it. I made a partial change per the request. Um, but you can, if you want it removed, I would just make a motion to remove that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I'd go either way. I mean, yeah, I'd, 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 in some way, I look at it, Troy, as, you know, a lot of this world we deal with is compromise. You know, yeah. look, you want a list of witnesses? Here's a list of witnesses. These are the people that showed up. It's just yeah. that simple. I mean, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, I, I mean, my my thought is it's it it goes against our normal process and our nor normal precedent. And there's I don't see any benefit to having it in there. I think it just raises more questions. And you know, the the list of uh, witnesses is part of the record. And if anyone wants to know, I mean, that's that this part is really not relevant because anything that was discussed that's pertinent to the hearing is actually in the, is discussed in the order anyway. Okay. And then the rest of it's in the record. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. So yeah. I would make a motion to uh, leave it out, leave the list of witnesses out, not include it. Uh, I'll second that. Any discussion? Uh, I, I agree with you as well. It's just one more thing that's out of the ordinary for us. Yeah, let's just Why? keep to the norm. Like let's just keep it the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. The list that you provided to try and get more in to look, look like we made a mistake or something. You know, that we ignored yeah. the affidavits, which I don't even remember seeing. Yeah, I, I just, I'll just say refer to the record, you know, mm -hmm. if you want a list of witnesses, you know, right. a full list of witnesses, whether by affidavit or in person, refer to the record. Okay. Any, any, um, other, any other discussion? No. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Motion carries unanimously. Um, and then number three, uh, he requested I remove a reference to NCGS 20-116 and 125. Um, he stated that the reference was not included and the notice of the violation, there was no testimony about them, and um, there was nothing in the official notice. You saw his comments, um, and he said that the um, stat including the statutory reference in the paragraph is inaccurate and misleading. Um, you saw my note, which is. Um, the statute is referenced, uh, it was presented in the county's case. Um, it was also part of the agenda packet, um, specifically the email from Ms. Lissero on July 25th, 2019, page 183. Um, my review of, of that was um, the board talked about the general statutes that the county was referencing, talked about park model RVs, and um, that's that's why it's listed there. And so, is this in like paragraph ten in the order where it references uh, NCGS twenty dash one sixteen? Page forty eight. Page forty eight. And let's see, it's in paragraph thirty two is what. He's so in the paragraph 10, uh, I think that to me that is a pertinent reference mm -hmm. if, if, if she was referencing the width of the dwellings um, exceeding 102 inches in width. Um, and you say, where else is it? Paragraph 32? So, so in in referencing referencing that citation, the the county never made um, made reference to this citation as part of the NOV. This was part of the discussion of the description of the dwellings as as not being um, uh, recreational vehicles, campers, recreational vehicles, or travel trailers. And that was in the, this is before the NOVs were um, uh, provided, issued, if you will. There's county, um, 
trying to look at my page number here, so I make sure I have the right. It's 183 of the agenda <clears throat> packet. And so where I found that was, and this was introduced to the board as evidence. Um, it's a July 25th email from Lori LaCicero to Connor Nally, Warren Edis, Mike Nally, copied Donna Volava, Bill Noons, and uh, Mr. McCree. And it says, Connor, Mike, Warren, the uh, county's building inspectors visited the, park model, visited the park models at Hampton Lodge last week after our phone call for assessment. We have concerns that the park models st stored on the site do not meet standards for campers and travel trailers. Section 10.5 of the Currituck UDO defines campers as portable dwellings. And it goes through the whole definition. Mm. I'm not going to read the whole thing. Upon inspection, it's apparent they are not intended to be transported over streets and highways, nor can they be used for casual travel. NCGS 40, NCGS, excuse me, 4 0.01 defines travel trailers as a vehicular uh, unit mounted on wheels, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, does not require a highway permit, NCGS 20-116 limits such vehicles to 102 inches. The park models are 13 feet, 9 inches wide um, and require highway moving permits. NCGS 20-124 requires brakes. These park models do not have brakes, nor do they have signals required as required by 20-125.1. And she, there's some more about what it does not um, qualify. That was July 25th. That was County Exhibit 7. Um, so, so can I ask this question? And the so, statutes are also provided in number 8 as emails that were sent. So, so I'm reading his, his response to your statement that you did not remove the reference. And he says, the statutory references were not included in either either of the two notices of violation being appealed at the hearing, and there was no testimony about them. So the first part of that sentence is not relevant because those citations were not part were not meant to be part of the NOV. They were meant to be part of the discussion of the definition of a recreational vehicle, right? right. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I th I'm... Now, I, I don't have a photographic memory, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that that was part of the discussion. That, that was kind of the basis of the whole discussion was that these things, you know, the claim was made that they were recreational vehicles and the county said they were not. That's right. You know, so I, I, and I don't remember if, um, if the county actually made specific reference to these uh, citations during their testimony, but... Um, this statement that there was no testimony about those citations, like I find that hard to believe, um, you know, based on my recollection of what the discussion was about in the first place. I remember the discussion about it when we got into the the weight, we got into the the transportation method, we mm -hmm. displayed pictures that were taken with oversized load and yeah, you know, and yeah, on the the transport uh, tractor. Yeah, and, pulling off the road and such. You know, and those things. And I, I can, I honestly can't recall whether or not NCGS 20-11, you know, 6 and 125 were stated, but I know that we did talk about, you know, when you have a vehicle of that width, you know, over, you know, 102 inches, that you have to have a wide load permit. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if we talked or it was discussed at that actual reference, but everything in that reference was discussed. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, was, either way. You know, it doesn't have lights on it. It didn't have, you know, you can't hook up to it and tow it. And I remember the picture of the F-150 sitting there, and I said, mm -hmm. you know, I've got trucks a lot bigger than that, and there's no way in the world I could put that tongue weight on the back of them, mm -mm. you know. Right out. And, mm -hmm. you know, and... You know, it was a very clever photo where you couldn't see the hitch right. and, and all those discussions. 
and the width, and there's no markers, no side markers, none of that. I mean, we talked through all that. I'm, you know, mm -hmm. and it was so, a part of the evidence. Yeah, yeah. Just because it's made to an RV yeah. standard doesn't make it a right. a travel yeah. trailer. And it was made to an RV standard per the manufacturer. A construction technique. Which exactly, mm -hmm. which which led me to believe that their idea was to manufacture these cabins, pass them off as RVs for exactly the situation right. we had here, there where where cabins were not allowed. That's bingo, right, right there. Just adjusted the manufacturing and the definition <clears throat> of it. Yeah, a less technical to... development ordinance yeah. would say this is for RVs, and they'd say it's an RV, and they because couldn't we say it is. You know? Right. Well, because you can't dispute. Yeah. But we're very specific in Curitiba County about what an RV is, and it just doesn't meet that. So. And I'm correct in saying, Lauren, that it is not a requirement to have a general statute listed on an NOV. Isn't that correct? Oh, no, that's correct. So um, in terms of this paragraph 32 particularly, um, county staff made a determination that it didn't meet the definition, ne, definitional, definitional criteria for these stated reasons. And they were referencing the and they were the they were referencing so they made and and the they made um, that was a presentation they gave you as to why it did not and it's actually if you look at page well you don't have it and I can pass it if you want to see it page 13 of the agenda packet from that night that night which is the one two third page of staff's report it says staff determined the units did not meet cited UDO definitions because the units one were not able to be transported for casual travel due to the special highway moving permit were not permanent permanently towable by a light duty truck units were tra transported on a flatbed truck and exceeded 102 inches at 144 inches wide the units and this is in bold, needed a special highway moving permit, NCGS 20-116, end of bold, <laughs> yeah. to be transported over state roads. We're not intended to be transported over streets and highways due to the um, special highway moving permit. So it's right if there. you look at the... No. I even have it highlighted in my packet, Lauren, exactly that statement. Um, yeah. So, uh, <clears throat> And then the breaks and the breaks and signals are those statutory references are from the emails before. So I cited the, the statutory references because that was the basis that staff had referenced in their staff report and prior emails as their basis to arrive at that definition, which was the evidence presented to you that night. But that's where that is from. That's right. where I got that statutory reference from mm -hmm. um, but it is again this is your order and you have to make that um, well, stating it as six. evidence in the stating it as evidence in the order yeah, that's is ridiculous. not the, is not the same thing as as uh, saying that it was not included in e either the two notices of violation right. Right. so that the fact that that those regulatory citations were not uh, included in the notice of violation is irrelevant for this order that that, that it doesn't citation was part of the evidence valid by any means the order you know yeah I mean that, that's part of the evidence that's presented right that's not right the citation right that's but right both right. of those are in here too I yeah. mean if I go further through the staff report mm -hmm. you know yeah 20 116 is there as well and several times yeah i know i wasn't losing my mind because i know that was kind of the basis of the whole argument mm -hmm. and trying to you know determine is this yeah, a recreational vehicle or not you know it's all here i'd highlighted it when we yeah. went through it so yeah. I, i'm just going to make a motion that we stay with um keeping yeah. both of those uh references in there i'll to, second that motion mm -hmm. any discussion what was 125 that was the brakes and uh, lights. That gotcha. Okay. Yes. Email. Yep. Same thing. Yeah. Same discussion. Any other discussion? Nope. nope. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The motion carries unanimously. Um, and then the last 
issue, which I'm certain this board recalls <laughs> because it was a there was a lot of time spent on it. Um, the item number four, which was what did um, what did the planner testify to? Mr. Weber made a motion to dismiss and said, "Oh, she admitted everything on in her testimony, and so therefore none of this is something along the lines of." You need to make a finding, and I could read it directly from the um, transcript here, and I can pass that around if anybody wants it. But there was a motion to dismiss based on what her um, testament, what she testified to. My review of the record and um, this board's deliberations was that you were making your decision was not was based on the thought out staff report, not her flustered testimony in the hearing. And that was this board's very specific discussion. And I don't know if this is jogging any memories and if you want to. Well, I mean, the, the reality yeah. of it is we are taking the totality of all of the testimony and all of the documentation. Right. And just right. because you have one witness that gets flustered doesn't mean that everything else is incorrect um and so you see his comment his his notation here um and if you wanted to look back at his initial order request And I don't even think it's an obligation in a transcript to have the word flustered talking about any witness. You know, yeah. that's about interpretation of what you believe a person is going through. Um, that's just ridiculous. And I guess one of the things in here, and he noted um, the conclusions of law. He wanted me to add conclusions of law. I did not. Um, the two issues before the board were, and then he references the transcript. Um, and they both, you know, in their closing arguments said, basically, this is what you have to decide. Um, I did not add the conclusions of law. I left the conclusions of law that just for your standards of review for this matter, mm -hmm. I did not include his, uh, I guess, asserted stipulated issues that he believed the board were the two issues before the board. So I think that that was kind of your decision to um, make and uh, what he requ I don't think it's required and it's neither here nor there. No. So I did not include that, but he didn't raise that on his four right. items in return. Um, I'm looking for the thing about the. And you know, our 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 decision was not based strictly on. Her testimony. I mean, we were all we're all able to read the UDO ourselves, and you know, we could read the definitions and. Well, we had numerous questions that were related. Oh yeah, for sure. Right. It, it was a thorough. Uh, yeah. Reading. Yeah. I mean, just I don't from, even from all ways. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yep. We had all the other evidence out there. Just the same as PC had a gentleman who sat down who testified that no, it's an RV. It is. It's made to an RV standard. It's an RV, and Lori got wrapped up I think she got wrapped up in her words but regardless uh -huh. of that you know you if you asked her you know how much is two and two and she said five there you go she said it's five if I can do the math myself and figure out it's four yeah you know mm -hmm. it's four you know yeah. we asked about weight we asked about width we asked about yeah. where's your lights specifically about a registration yeah. whether it has state registration yeah. or not you know? yeah and even if you say these things are RVs how are you going to move these things every what was it 30 days or whatever they had to move right you're going to tear all that skirting just comes it doesn't come right off i know how right. that stuff is applied i saw the pictures yeah you and, know i mean it's just it, it's and it really is crazy. not you know it really is is not a matter of yeah you you know she she may have gotten um you know you had someone you know telling her that the manufacturer's calling this an rv you know isn't it in fact an rv well, that really is irrelevant because for our purposes, 
All we care about is whether what current county calls. whether the UDO, mm-hmm. the criteria established in the UDO for a camper, recreational vehicle, or travel trailer were met. Right. You know that mm-hmm. that's that's what we were we were after. Well, and specifically for this portion, so his um, proposed change that I declined to make was that it was in paragraph 31 on that first markup. And he asked that I, that I add four of the units that were located in the AE zone, although they may be classified as recreational vehicles by the manufacturer, did not meet the definitional standards of the UDO for permissible camping units. Um, specifically at this non-conforming um, campground. Then he went on to say, Planning Director Lori LaCicero testified as follows. Um, I and, and goes through and he puts the, um, uh, puts the, so four, so four of the 17 park model RVs, they comply with the code and, and the four do not, right? And so he goes through to talk about that and he references the transcript. I have the transcript if anybody wants to look at it. Um, I did not include the reference to the AE zone and then I did not include um, her testimony that now a certain number were compliant versus the other because this board had specifically deliberated over her testimony um, which he argued and decided that that portion was not um, the, 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 that was not the most convincing evidence to you in the t- entirety of all of her testimony plus the exhibits that were before you. So I did not include those. Now, is that part of the record? Yes. Sure. Is it part of whatever can happen after your order is entered? Mm-hmm. Yes. That's not our, that's not for us to, um, do. Um, and so that is, um, I mean, how long does an order have to effectively be? <laughs> you know, does that have to well, be 300 pages or can know, it be 50 the pages? The order has to yeah. properly document the proceedings before the Board of Adjustment. It's got to properly document um, a basis for your decision and what you consider. Um, and I just, I did not include that because you were very specific in your deliberations that you did not consider that testimony. But, I mean, you didn't mm-hmm. give weight. You know, you're the judge, right? You're, you yeah. get to give weight to testimony. Uh, yeah, obviously, we heard it, and it wasn't that important. It was not, I agree. So that's why I didn't include it, but you mm-hmm. see his comments there. Um, you saw the county's response. Um, and But I, that's, that is why we are here, because if that was persuasive to you or considered, then... You know, certainly we need to um, address that. I mean, it's typical, just like in all hearings, when one attorney uh, feels like they've had a win when speaking with a witness, you know, that, that they think it's momentum, but necessarily it isn't. You know what I mean? It's kind of like... Hey, I win. I, I got this person to say something different than original, maybe, or whatever the case may be. People think it's a win, but it's not necessarily a win. Well, I just, that's why we are here tonight. So if you want to include it, please advise. If you do not want to include it, please advise. What disadvantage is there? to including it and what disadvantage for not including it. It, is, it was pretty much irrelevant, wasn't it? Well, I think that's what all know, of us I'm thought. Certain, I'm certain that the appellant feels it is very relevant. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, in terms of what this, your order, um, you know, Mr. Weber quotes the ordinance to me in his response and says, Section 2.3.10, C of the UDO requires the board clearly state the factors considered in making the decision and the basis or rationale for that decision. Um, and so, so aren't those the factors? Require 
requires each quasi-judicial judicial decision to be reduced to writing or reflect the board's determination of contested facts. I don't facts. think the factor was a factor that she stated for were um, or weren't. You know, as far as the overall subject matter that we were hearing, that was one little bitty piece of all of that information that we were given and heard. So I, I don't feel like it was representative of really anything. That was part of the evidence. We heard it. We made our decision based on all of the evidence, not just one 10-second piece of verbal evidence. Yeah, I mean, I agree with you as well. And the reality of it is, just like he said, it's it's in the transcript and it's in the video. If you want to make a dispute about it, that's that's where it is. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the order. Well, and again, the order is a reflection of the factors you considered, um, and we didn't consider that. Mm -hmm. well, I'd have to say we did consider mm -hmm. it, but it was a very small part. It was dismissed very quickly. Right there exactly. you go. Mm -hmm. So, what is this section? Uh, this section two point. 3.8 Delta 2 of the UDO. He says, no, 2.3.10 point mm -hmm. Charlie of the UDO requires the board to clearly state the factors considered in making the decision and the basis or rationale for the de decision. So that doesn't say that it has to be stated in the order, does it? Or is it state, or is our statement decision. in our deliberation? The order is a written decision, but that doesn't right. say that that has to be included. If it was a factor in your decision, yeah, um, then sure, we need to include it. If there's something that was a factor that you, upon review of this order, that you guys did not see, mm -hmm. um, you said, you know, I, I really, I thought when I we had this hearing, I thought that this was an important factor, and and I didn't see that listed in the order. Mm -hmm. um, um, then tell me, because even if they, if no one's fighting about it, but you <laughs> thought it, we need to put it in there. Mm -hmm. um, I really do my best to try to get everything that's said by everybody. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I, I take everyone's comments and kind of squish them together to to get where you, where you, um, well, you're you know, creating so a list, narrative, list, you know, I don't list 10 factors. Uh, for each individual, you know, that um, you know, board member Von Temps listed these factors for her. You know, I list all the factors that you guys, or items that you guys talk about and deliberate and the things that you find in your deliberations. I mean, so. you, can, you can go ridiculous with the literal interpretation of any item. So. Just like that. Um, that section of the UDO says that the board's got to state the factors. Um, considered in making the decision and the basis or rationale for that decision. So if you feel like his proposed addition about the AE zone and um, the planning director's testimony was a factor in your decision, then it should be included. If you do not feel like that was a factor in your decision, then it should not be included. Well, it was a long meeting, and I don't really remember the, the verbatim <laughs> testimony that she made. You know, I mean, it, and if a witness gets flustered, everybody gets flustered, you know, one time or another. I don't think that should be a determining factor. I remember her doing it. I remember yeah. the discussion. I remember mm -hmm. her doing it, and I remember what she said, and I said, that's not, I thought to myself, that's not right. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I knew when she said it, and I think when she, after she said it, she knew it wasn't she right either. It, he just got her in her words, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. Is it an RV? Well, it's made an RV standard. Don't you agree? And yes, oh, yes, yes, yes. And mm -hmm. it just walked her through it very quickly. And, and then it was like, no, no. It's, it's like, well, you said yes. Right. You know, and uh, well, you know, I, didn't, I didn't care for the way he handled it either. I just, mm -hmm. well, he was, like, he, he was kind of boiled He was digging boiled pretty it. hard. Well, yeah. again, my <laughs> obligation is to say, regardless of how he handled it or not, is if it's a factor, it's a factor. If it's yeah. not, it's not. Um, did, yeah. did that testimony, was that testimony um, a factor in your decision? I did not include it because you were 
pretty specific in your deliberations that it was not. But if it is, then please advise. That's We know. listened to it, yeah. we considered it, right. and we dismissed it very quickly. So I think all of our other determination was based about the very hard facts of the definition that said a RV is such in the UDO. We looked at what is there. It's 13, almost 14 feet wide. It requires a special permit. You can't move it regularly. It's not towable by a light truck. There's no, you know, lights and signals and all the other devices and all the things. Right. right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And wasn't even, yeah, to your, I remember right. even that discussion yep, too. I remember that discussion. And weight and CDLs and whole, yeah. whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. Long story short, we went through all that technical stuff and said, yeah. there was it, no way that it, it doesn't could, work. It with the re restrictions from the UDO or the guidelines in the UDO, those did not fit anywhere. I don't care. A E V zone X shaded I'm, X. Yeah. None of that. None of that matters. It, mm -mm. It, right. It's not an RV. There you go. Yeah. And according to our awesome. UDO, it's according, not an RV. Yeah. According to our UDO, now, they it's may not go an into RV. Camden, and Camden may consider it an RV, but that's Camden. not Curator. 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 Yeah. Right. right. All right. So, based on that, I'll make a motion to go with what Lauren has proposed, and um, not including that portion of testimony. Yeah, here a second. Yep, I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I think we've talked about all of it, and we all, I think we all agree that yeah. it wasn't really much of a factor. No, agreed. Yep, agreed. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. The motion carries unanimously. Um, those are the four main factors. I will note that. Mr. Weber's response was that all of his August 8th proposed changes be adopted. Um, and I provided the, um, in your packet, his markup of August 8th we've addressed. Where is that? Oh, I'm sorry. Starts on page 26 for us. I mean, the four majors you've covered, do you want me to run through these or are you satisfied with the draft? Um, Any discussion about it? I just want to take a minute just to read through his one more time, see if there's anything in there that I think is relevant. That's fine. And then, uh, and, and, and I, I don't mind kind of going along and telling you where, what if any differences were made, if that helps. I kind so, of just need some quiet, to be honest. Yeah, with I don't. You. Th I don't yeah. think we really need them. So yeah. the so the blue is all of his. Yeah, the blue is his. Mm -hmm. Red so is yours. Blue and red. Um, blue would be a new addition. Red would be something that he like marked up or changed. Um, but the blue comments, any changes that you see here, blue or red, are all his. Okay. Oh, okay. And the on the and the comments to the right are. Start his. starting on page twenty six, right? Starting on page twenty six. That's right.
<clears throat> I have a quick question. So, um, in Mr. Weber's markup version, he uh, looks like he makes some tweaks to some of the language that appears to be coming directly from the UDO definitions. Can, can we verify that those changes are accurate? I'm, I'm not sure where he's getting those changes from. I, um, so we should stick to the verbiage of the UDO. Yes. Mm -hmm. Especially if his change is right, make it right. 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 If, right. Yeah. if his change matches the UDO, make the change. I'm pretty sure I made those changes. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so some of these changes I made. Okay. Those were some, the ones, like I said, I didn't go through and catalog every single change I made. Yeah, okay. But I, one of those, like if you saw, well, if the board decides to keep this and we ask you add this at the end, mm -hmm. I added his request to the end of the paragraph. Mm -hmm. I okay. cut the paragraph and added his request to the end. <clears throat> In, in your draft, while we're doing that, paragraph nine, it states, in November 2019, prior to termination of staff, the appellant moved six units to the campground using oversized load signs on flat bead trucks. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that's one, but it's they weren't on flatbed trucks. They were actually on their own frame and axles, their temporary axles underneath. Okay. So... A flatbed truck would be something totally different. Mm -hmm. So what, what what should I put there? I would so say they're moved on using on their oversized own load signs. On their own wheels and axles? Yeah, if you wanted to say that, or just using oversized load signs. Yeah, maybe not on the flatbed truck, omit it completely. There was no flatbed truck. Okay, how was it transported? On its own wheels? Using oversized signs with a uh, commercial uh, tow tractor. Tow vehicle. Yeah. Commercial truck would probably be the one. Is that like a axles and what? I'm sorry, it's on frame. You know how, you know how frame axles? It, it, already, yeah. it has a frame and axles underneath it. Okay. Okay. Like a, like a travel trailer be, does. You know, but it wasn't on a flatbed truck. A flatbed is a real low trailer you set it on. But it was towed with a commercial truck. So I would, if I were to write it, I would say move the six units to the campground using oversized load signs with a commercial truck. AKA. Or the appellate moves six units by trucks, by commercial trucks to the campground using oversized load signs. You know, yeah. displaying, mm -hmm. yeah, displaying, displaying oversized mm -hmm. load placards. The commercial trucks. Oversized load placards. That's the so DOT line. Number language. nine that you're discussing in November 2019, prior to determination by county staff, the appellant moves six units used by commercial trucks to the campground displaying. Oversized load stackers. Yep. Yes. Do we need to? Do you need to mention that they had a special permit to do that on the highway? Um, I don't know that a permit was ever presented. I thought they I said thought they did have the a permit. I thought that was in the testimony that they had. Uh, they had a permit. Yeah. Did you want us to make a motion on this change also? Okay, could I get, uh, I'd like to make a motion, you, would you like to make a motion on that for the change you just Sure, requested? I'd be happy to make a Go motion ahead. for the change that we had stated. Um, and I'll second the motion. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye to changing aye. paragraph aye. nine. All opposed say nay. The motion carries unanimously. And then you were talking about the permit, the very next paragraph discusses that the units are 144 inches wide and requ which requires a special highway moving permit pursuant to the statute. <laughs> and I, if I remember correctly, I think that they testified that they did have permits. 
Does any do you, does anybody else remember them? No, I, I don't. I don't, I don't remember. They said but, they did I because that was one of the points of yeah. the, the evidence that they had not gotten permits to move them. Yeah. I thought they had a police escort and all of that. I mean, you have to have yeah. a permit for that. I think it all depends. I think you it. can call and ask for an escort. Yeah. Without a permit. Yeah. Procedural. There were technically two NOVs that were appealed that night, right. and right. at the very beginning of the hearing, mm -hmm. everyone agreed that they would hear both NOVs at the same time. And I left it in there just as a yeah, um, as a point. The board proceeded through this. Yeah, part of the decision was mm -hmm. that they were heard together. Right. Um, so I have no reason not to, not to include that. Yeah. But that's that's why that's where that came from. And then the, the next paragraph that you marked out cabins or cottage units. Um, the appellant calls part model recreational vehicles. I mean, <laughs> we um, use that we use that definition you know, term. So if you look at my paragraph new, five by new version. Where's that? Um, page forty six. Paragraph five. Paragraph five. I left the locating cabins or cottages units and I added at the end appellant refers to the units as park model recreational vehicles. Okay, right. Yeah, um, right. so there's kind of a um he wanted to remove. I just added his uh, what the appellant refers to these. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Units as. Yeah, that makes um, sense. But staff definitely referred to them as cabin yes. or cottages mm -hmm. repeatedly. Yes, so. Right. And I'm sure that was a result of the width. <laughs> well. You know. Well. And definition. Yeah, a definition as well. I was yeah. Saying, you know. So that's. Again, I mean, I'm sure he's not concerned with this, but common sense, you looked at those pictures and they were not RV trailers that get carried around on vacation. They weren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On um, um, paragraph six of your uh, final your version. Yes. Um, it says on July 23rd, 2019. County staff received an email with data plates for six units. Do we know who that email came from? Do we do we need to specify we who that came from? Came from. Um, what was the date of that email? July twenty third, twenty nineteen. Yeah, I remember with the exhibits. They had pictures of the Right. I do remember that. You know. And too much the data plates were just put on there by manufacturer. I'm sure that was required by law, but it didn't it didn't determine didn't convince me that they were RV by any means. It didn't to me it had no relevance to what we what You can we, call anything anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You well, paying, your you know. review is the standards and the ordinance. So. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um 
I mean, you don't have to look it up now. That, I, I would just think we should it's clarify in, where it came from, if, at, if it I, came from the appellant or, you know. I, did you say July 23rd? Yep. Mm -hmm. It came from Connor Nally, who is the business development manager. It says I've attached the RVIA numbers, um, our terms working to get registrations through NCDMV. Once we send out the documents to DMV, um, we should expect registrations within four to eight weeks. That's the email. I remember reading that, and I, and I specifically, that's why I asked. I said, well, are, have they gotten the registrations? Because I knew they wouldn't, you know, because they're not, they're not something the DMV would register. And register. then the attachments were the um, numbers that they didn't have the measurements. So, Troy, were you wanting her to add? But I can add that, too. I can. Yeah, yeah, just for, just for clarity. Yeah, from the from the appellant, if they want to just call it from the appellant, it just yeah. Do you want to make a motion on that? Yeah, I can do that. Um, yeah, I'd like to make a motion that we um, add uh, a reference in paragraph six on page forty-seven. Um, county staff received an email uh, from. Uh, either the appellant or the uh, or the specific person. Either the specific person is not really named anywhere else in here, so you know it might it might. Um, I don't see his name listed anywhere specifically. It would be appropriate to say uh, the appellant's representative. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. His name, so appellant's representative Connor and Allie. Okay. Yeah, that would I'm, work. I'm fine with that. I'll second that. Is there any discussion? Nope. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say aye. nay. Motion carries unanimously. that to say appeal of notice violation 1389 that first there is a typo it should just say at issue appeal of, at notices dated june 10th 2020 july 24th 2020 and then i go on to note the next one so i'm going to remove notice violation 1389 from line the third line because i said it twice so and no matter how many attorneys you have read this document every time you read it you will find I something else something. but if that's the worst we get, we'll be okay. And we don't need a we don't need a, a motion on that one because that's a it's not correction. The typo. Yeah. Right. So. Good. Were there any other questions or comments about his um, proposed changes? I don't have anything else, Lauren. And am I correct in saying on page 59 at the very bottom where it talks about what they were requesting would be submitted to Superior Court? Those are normal items that get submitted. This is not something in addition to what we normally would send as a part of the order. That this be part of the record. So once the order, that's this is not part of the order. The order is its own document within the record. The record includes um, start to finish what was presented before the board, the recording, the all the um, mm -hmm. uh, exhibits, all the exhibits, <laughs> um, and so and and the board's. Um, order so the things he's asking to be included in the record that's the record once there's an appeal from the board of adjustment there's a re uh, there's a record that's per kind of proposed if you will that's an issue on the appeal side so him asking that these things be included in the record that's going to be 
Um, that's beyond this board's okay. concern at this juncture. But right. I wanted to include all of his correspondence. He specifically asked, you saw on there, that his correspondence be included mm -hmm. in the record as kind of objections to the order. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that's, uh, that. in terms of what's included in the record, will be for the appeal end of this. But in terms of this order... Those were the things, and then of course you saw his his markup, and then you saw the county's markup, and um, yeah, there was um, some clarifications added, some um, UDO added, but I, I don't. There was no substantive modifications, mm -hmm. and then I will confirm that the. Um, Statement, the UDO definitions match the UDO before I submit it back. I'll just confirm that because mm -hmm. as I'm sitting here, I don't want to say. I feel 90 Would you like us to have a motion positive. regarding that? No. Okay. I don't think that's necessary. Okay. Um, I feel 99% positive that <laughs> I did double check it, but mm -hmm. in the buns of caution, I will double check that before I submit it back. Um, if Are there any other points of discussion are there is there anything having reviewed the order that you feel was not discussed that you felt was a basis or a factor in your consideration for this matter I don't have any regrets whatsoever about what transpired that night as far as our board we all did our civic duty mm -hmm. and what we were required to do by the rules of procedure and we made a good decision, and I back our decision 100% by what we did. I agree with that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Did you want us to have a final motion to include all of these items as a whole? I would. If, if everyone is prepared to proceed, I see um, Troy is still re reviewing, so I don't want to no. all the time <laughs> No, I'm I'm done. I was just kind of reading through. I was just trying to read through the final one, just straight through one time, and just mm -hmm. make sure everything makes sense. So I, I think I'm good. Would you like to make a motion, Troy? Uh, certainly. A synopsis or whatever. And I, I don't think you have to go back over every one. Oh no, I wouldn't think so. That we're all in agreement <clears throat> for right. all of the changes we've requested. Right. Perhaps something like that. All right. Um, I would like to make a motion for this board to uh, approve all the changes discussed at uh, tonight's hearing uh, for the uh, order uh, before us tonight um, in their in totality. I'll second that motion. Is there any discussion about this particular motion? Mm-mm. All those in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say nay. Hearing none, the motion carries unanimously. Okay. And with the board's permission, I will make these changes that you voted on and submit the order to Troy, who was the chair at the time, for his signature. Mm -hmm. And then it'll be distributed. That was going to be a question I was going to ask you. Did he and I have to sign it because he was then and this is now? Okay. Cool. Yeah. So You're off the hook. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are we done with new business now? We are. We are, done. are there any announcements from anyone? I would like to make an announcement and uh, welcome our newest alternate board member, Shay Balance, to the board. He previously had served on the board before for about a three year period, and he has just recently come off a six year term with the planning board for the county as well. So. He's uh, very accustomed to what we have to do here, so he'll be a good addition. Yeah, welcome. Any other announcements? Can I get a motion to adjourn the meeting? Motion to adjourn. I'll second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The motion carries unanimously. <laughs>